Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise, O oh God, and we give you all the glory, Lord, and we honor you and we worship you, O oh God, and we exalt you. And we bow before you, O oh God, because your name is above every name, O oh God, and you're worthy to be praised, O oh God. We thank you that you were with us throughout this day, O oh God, and we thank you, God, that we have you as Father and as God and as King. And even now, O oh God, humble me, O oh God, before your throne, Lord Jesus. Let your word go forth, O oh God, without hindrance, O oh God. Let your name be exalted, O oh God, on high. Let the hearts of your people be truly blessed, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity that sinners can come before a holy God. Father God, we don't take it for granted, O oh God, and we just praise you and we honor you and we bless your holy name. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen and amen. Ephesians 1, 3 to 6 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. The spoken word this morning is, God sees who he created you to be. God sees who he created you to be. And sometimes... I know we struggle, I know I struggle, with who God sees me and who he created me to be. And we all struggle with that, right? Sometimes when we look in the mirror, we're not seeing who God created us to be. And we know that God created us precious. We're precious children of God. And whatever God has predestined, see we just read, in Ephesians 1 and it talks about predestined. It means that before God put us in our mother's womb, he chose us for a certain purpose. He spoke certain things in our lives and what I love about God and God's word is that whatever he predestined for you has to go forth. It doesn't matter your circumstance. It doesn't matter how long it may take, you might think it's taking long, but the word of God said a thousand years for us is only an evening for God. So we just have to hold on because whatever God predestined for us will come through. And what I love about God is that he's not looking at where we are and how we see ourselves. He looks at us as how he created us to be. And we ought to love a God like that. Because you see, when man looks at us, man looks at us as how we look and the car we drive and the job we have and the family we have and our husband and all the nonsense. But God looks beyond that. And I love the God that I serve. That I might not have the nice car and the nice job and the nice house, but before the foundation of the earth, he created you and me for a greater purpose. And that is what children of God has to hold on to. We can't let systems and the world determine, society determine who we are. We have to see ourselves through the eyes of God. We have to understand that we serve a God, that the word of God says that my thoughts are not like your thoughts nor are my ways like your ways. God turned everything that humanity might think as knowledge into foolishness. That's the God that we serve. So I'm gonna go into the word of God this morning because I want, I want you to, to, to just stay with me for a little bit because as I was studying this word this week, we all know the story of Abraham, that God called Abraham and promised him, you know the blessings of Abraham, that everyone on earth will be blessed because of him. And Abraham was promised a son. And I'm not going to talk about Ishmael this morning because the promise came through Isaac. And we have Isaac, right? And then Isaac had two sons. 
Isaac had two sons, and we're going to talk about those two sons this morning. Because as we talked about society, Isaac's wife, Rebecca, was pregnant with twins, Esau and Jacob. And the word of God said that while these children, and you could go to Genesis 25, 23, were in the womb. She, she went to God because she said, there's a wrestling in my womb. What's going on? Is something wrong? And hear what the word of God says about these children while they were in their mother's wombs. The word of God said, the Lord said to Rebecca, two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. And the older shall serve the younger. God is already defying what society says. Because guess what? When the twins came out, Esau came out first. So what does that make it? Esau is the oldest. So if Esau is the oldest... He should get everything. The eldest always gets the inheritance. The eldest gets the birthright, the inheritance, the blessing. But remember what the word of God said. The older shall serve the younger. And you know, we read the story about Jacob a lot of times because we know that Jacob bought Esau's birthright for a cup of soup, right? But the one that I love is the one where when Isaac was getting ready to die and he wanted to give a blessing to Esau, his firstborn, and the mother, Rebecca, decided that she's not going to allow Esau to get that blessing. She is going to let Jacob pretend, you see, to be his brother. But I want you to understand something here. You have to understand something. I don't want you to miss this. That when Jacob got dressed up as Esau and he went into the presence of his father and his father said, the voice is Jacob, but the hands and the clothing and the smell is like Esau. And he continued to bless Jacob. Why do you think? He had to bless Jacob. Because the blessings before the foundations of the earth, before he went into his mother's womb, the word of God, the Lord said, the older will have to serve the younger. So despite the fact that we might look at Jacob as a con artist, you see, the blessing was never for Esau, you see. The blessing was always for Jacob. And even though the method, we might look at the method and say, oh, what did he do? He wasn't taking what wasn't already his. Because God already spoke it. He aligned it. You see, Esau could never get that blessing, you see. Because the children of Israel, the nation of Israel had to come through Jacob. So Esau, Edom had nothing to do with this heritage that God pronounced from Abraham. So the fact that yes, a, a thing happened that we would frown on, you see, human beings. This, that's why we don't understand God. Let's not try to understand God, you see. We'll just confuse ourselves if we try to understand God. Because you would want to think that what kind of man would do? But it was his to begin with. And the word of God said that when Esau heard it, he wanted to kill his brother. And he went on the run. But what I love that we read this morning, that when Jacob was on the run, and he found himself at a place, and we read it in Genesis 28, 13 to 15, to show you that God is a covenant God. He said, and behold, the Lord stood above, because he saw a ladder ascending and descending, and God stood at the end, the top of the ladder. And the Lord said to Jacob, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie. I will give to you and your descendants also. You also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your seed, all the families.
families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you will go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I've done what I have spoken to you. This is the assurance that God gave Jacob. Right after we would think he conned his father out of a blessing. But the blessing was for Jacob. The blessing of having descendants of the sand of the seashore was for Jacob and not for Esau. So no matter how much Isaac wanted based on cultural standards that the firstborn should get the blessing, God chose Jacob for that blessing. And there is nothing that anyone could do to change that. That blessing had to go on to Jacob. So that's why you have to see that God doesn't see how we see. Because you would think that because he did that cunning, God wouldn't honor it. But God already spoke it. It was spoken before that act that this was what would happen. And that's what I love about God. You see, anything that God speaks into your life has to come to you. No matter how long it takes. And you would think that after that happened that Jacob would just walk into it didn't it took Jacob 20 years I want you guys to understand that sometimes there are things that God already spoke into your life before you came here that has not been manifested yet but by faith you have to wait on God by faith you have to believe that whatever God speaks the word of God said whatever he speaks has to go forth it says it does not come back to him void it says it go forth and prospers in the thing that he had sent it so even if it takes 20 years you have to understand how God works and I'm going to show you so that we don't lose heart, you see, when we're waiting on God for some things. And it seems like it's taken forever. Remember that God sees you the way he created you to be. And whatever he speaks for you will come forth. You have to think about it. Abraham was 75 when God told him to go to a land. 25 years he waited for the son of promise. 25 years so he was a hundred before he even got a glimpse of his son Isaac when he thought it wasn't possible anymore Isaac was 40 when he prayed to God that his wife was barren Jacob and Esau wasn't born until 60 20 years so have you been waiting on God for anything for 20 years have you been waiting for God to manifest some things for 20 years? I don't think I've been waiting 20 years because the math with my age don't work out. So we have to have faith in God's sins. You can't lose hope when you're waiting on God because God's timing is perfect. You see, Jacob went to Laban and why? he was working for Laban for 20 years God was building the nation of Israel yeah. you have to understand our God works that he can use our waiting period to birth what he has predestined before the foundations of the earth that's the God that we serve that even though Jacob was serving Laban and Laban was taking advantage of Jacob God was building the nation of Israel that he said that these are going to be his people and nations will bow before them. God was doing this in his waiting period. And after his 11 children were born to him, God said it's time to go. You see, that's the God that we serve. That when it's time for you to step into where God has for you, Nothing can stop it. Nothing can delay it. So after 20 years was done, God said, it's time for you to go back to your father's land. The land that I promised to Abraham and Isaac. The land that's flowing with milk and honey. It's time for you to go back. And, and Jacob in obedience went back. And we know how the story went that when Esau was coming to meet him, he thought that he was going to be in trouble and that he wrestled with God. And that's when God changed his name from Jacob to Israel.
Israel. So I'm here to tell you that no matter how it starts, no matter what you're going through, God has a plan for your life. Because with this one man who started with like a con artist, he ended up being the father of Israel. Jacob, your name shall no longer be Jacob. It shall be Israel. And the 12th tribe of Israel was born to this man. And he had descendants as great as the sand as the seashore. And we know this. That is the God that we serve. God doesn't operate as human beings operate. The heavenly culture is not like the earthly culture. We cannot fathom how our God works. But we saw what he did with Jacob. If that happened in this time, you steal, your bro you steal something from a brother. They would throw you in jail. And they would cast you out. And they would tell you nothing good can come from you. But at the end of the day, it is what God says. Because God doesn't see how man sees. And I love that about God. And he knows who we are and what he sent us here for. So we continue. And we have to continue because I want you to see the workings of God. So Jacob had 12 sons, right? And when he was on his deathbed, he was blessing all his sons. And I'm going to only talk about one son, Judah. In Genesis 49, 9 to 12, while he was blessing his sons, hear what he says to Judah. He says, Judah, you are he whom your brother shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion who shall rouse him, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people, binding his donkey to the vine and his donkey's coal to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine and his teeth whiter than milk. Judah, that was the blessing that was pronounced to Judah. So we fast forward to the second scripture that we read this morning in 1 Samuel 16. And in 1 Samuel 16, this was when King David was anointed king. And I love that scripture because we know Saul disobeyed God. But yet again, here we are again with the same thing. That if you're reading the word of God, you will know that Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. But the promise of the king of kings is from the tribe of of Judah. So even though Saul was a temporary king, it wasn't his throne. We serve a God that you don't even understand how God works. You see, Saul had to do what he did because the kingdom wasn't his to begin with. The king had to come from the tribe of Judah. So the word of God said that Saul disobeyed God. And that Samuel was sent to the house of Jesse to anoint a son as king. And Jesse had seven sons. And Samuel, as the sons start coming before him, he's seeing how they look. They're tall, they're strong, they're handsome. And he said, this is God's anointing. And God said, no, I've rejected him, I've rejected him, I've rejected him, I've rejected him. God does not see how man sees. So as every one of Jesse's son passed by, God said, I have rejected them. The same way as God said, I rejected Saul from being king over Israel. Because David, now David was young. He was probably 15, 14. He was a young man. And the word of God said, Samuel was like, do you not have any other sons? And when David came, 
God said, yes, this is my anointing. And the word of God said that Samuel anointed David king. And do you know how many years it took David to ascend the throne? Oh my Lord, it took him half his life. He didn't ascend the throne until in his 30s. 15 years. And what did he go through through those times when God said that he is king? He was anointed king. But Saul wanted to kill him because he thought that the kingdom should have been his. No one can take from you what God has predestined for you. I'm here to tell you that no matter how much they try to kill you, no matter how much they try to tear you down, no matter what they try to do to you, no one can take from you what God has predestined for you. It might take you a long time to get there, but the word of God said all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So it might take you 15 years, it might take you 20 years, but I'm here to tell you that whatever God speaks in your life before he puts you in your mother's womb has to go forth. The devil in hell can't change it. He can come at you. He can set people against you like Saul. Saul lost his mind. The word of God said that when David got anointed, that the Holy Spirit was upon him and the Holy Spirit left Saul. You understand? So Saul wasn't in his right mind anymore and he did everything in his power to kill David. But what I love about God is that God said, if I am for you, who can be against you? So even though David was living in strongholds and even though he was running for his life for all those years, God never left him. Because what God spoke had to go forth. David had to assume the throne from the tribe of Judah. David had to assume that throne because by David assuming the throne, the work of God could continue where he talks about the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth because you see Jesus Christ had to come through the tribe and the line of Judah. So you see David had to rise to the throne. It couldn't be Saul because Jesus is in, from the best from the tribe of Benjamin, you see. He is from the tribe of the lion. Lion of Judah. So we needed all this to happen, you see. That's the God that we serve. So don't get disheartened when things aren't going the way you think they're supposed to go. God is in it. And God is working it out. It's not you to worry about what's going to happen next. God, before... You see, that's what I love about God. God works before time. Before the foundations of the earth. Before, before, before. Everything is before. So you see, because it's before, and he's the alpha, and he's also the omega. So because he saw it before, and he already knows how it's going to play out, it's for us by faith to believe and to wait on God to wait on God because the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. You show me something that God has promised that was irrevocable. It cannot be. No. It has to work out. Yes. All if they throw you in a pit, yes. it's going to work out because the pit is going to take you to your destiny. Oh, aren't you excited this morning, saints of God? Aren't you excited to know that no matter where you find yourself in, God is going to work it out and propel you to where he says you ought to be. That's the God that we serve. Saul spent his entire reign. Instead of he was supposed to be fighting the Philistines. He was fighting David. And he doesn't realize that it was God that he was fighting. You see, because once God is for you, oh my Lord, once God 
is for you. No one can be against you. So they're fighting a losing battle, you see. So, so Saul wasted all his time on the throne fighting to keep something. We have some people that are trying to fight you for things that are not theirs. My God, we have some people in our lives that are trying to fight us for things that are not even theirs. And when they come against us, they're coming against the Almighty God. Because He said, He who touches you touches the apple of my eyes. So, saints of God, you gotta wake up and see who you are in God, you see. You have to understand that the Word of God said that we're a royal priesthood, we're a holy nation, we're chosen people of God who were once in darkness and have been brought into a marvelous light. We have to understand that we are not ordinary people. We are a peculiar mm, chosen generation. We're chosen people of God. So we ought to be excited to know that just as how God worked it out for Jacob and David and it might have took years that God is working it out for us because you see with David we have the Messiah the Messiah came through the lineage of David Jesus Christ of Nazareth and because of what Jesus you see we have to go back to Genesis 3 you see you see because when God was pronouncing the curses and he cursed the man and he cursed the serpent what, what did he say he said the woman shall bring forth a seed and he shall crush your head you see my God you see that had to come it all had to come forth the seed the seed and it had to come through the line of Judah it had to come through the line of Judah. So no other tribe. It couldn't work. It couldn't work no matter how they tried it. Esau couldn't have the blessing because it wasn't coming through Edom, you see. The blessing had to come through Jacob because Jacob was going to give give birth to the 12 tribes of Israel because Judah had to be in the mix, you see. All working out. For humanity because he said he told Abraham that through you all nations of the earth will be blessed he said your descendants are going to be like the sand of the seashore and isn't that what salvation did when Jesus came on the scene he moved the walls of separation that was between us and God and, and salvation was extended not only, not only to the Jews but to the Gentiles alike because God wanted to bring us all into one family so now we as children of God the word of God said that we are joint ears with God that we can say Abba Father we stand with Jesus Christ. We now have that inheritance that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And because of that saints of God, we have to believe that we're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We have to believe that despite I might have been waiting on you for a long time, God, it's going to work out. It is coming. It is not going to be delayed. We have to have faith in God to believe that the same way he worked it out for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, and all the patriarchs of the past that waited on God. They waited on the promise. Jacob didn't see all of the promise. He saw his sons, yes. Judah, he saw them. But we are able to see the promise, the manifestation of the promise through Jesus Christ. Because through what Jesus did on Calvary's cross, 
we are now children of the most high God and if you're a child of God you tell me that your future don't look bright you tell me if you're a child of the most high God what can stand in your way what can prevent you from accomplishing what God has predestined for you to accomplish nothing can stop it no devil in hell can stop it he can delay it but only for a time because when the time is set he has to he has to just back off and release it you see God allows us to go through a waiting period because you see in that waiting period you learn humility you learn patience you learn total dependency. You learn how to depend on God. Because sometimes if he, if he allows us to get to the mountain top too fast, we'll mess it up. We'll think it's us. We'll start giving ourselves praise instead of giving God the glory. So he allows some detours in our lives and those detours are to help us so that when we really get to where God has for us, we will understand that it wasn't by power or might, but it's by the Spirit of God. When we make it to where God has for us, self will already be crucified and God can get all the glory. So you have to praise God in the waiting period. Because during the waiting period, it's also your refining period. Because God is removing everything of you that is not of him. So that you can understand that it's not you that's in control. But it is God. That's the God that we serve. So in the waiting period, while we wait for the manifestation of whatever God has predestined for us. Let's ask God to help us to be still. The word of God said, be still and know that I am God. We have to be still in the waiting period. Let's not get antsy. You see, because we can mess it up. Everyone that went through their trials ultimately made it to where God had in store for them. Jacob went back to Canaan and got what he was supposed to get. David ascended the throne. Joseph, we know him. Every, it, didn't, it took them years to get to where God had for them. But through it all, God was doing a work in their lives. And we have to give God praise for the work that he does because there's a lot of things that we want and God has for us but if he gives it to us how we want it we will mess it up so he gives it to us by measure so that when we finally get to the end we can truly give God the praise because we know it was not us saints of God we have to lift our faith and we have to believe in the God that we serve. We have to see how God has created us to be. It doesn't matter who your parents are. It doesn't matter what vessel was used to bring you here. It doesn't matter where you grew up, where you are now. What matters is that you are a child of God with the blood of Jesus Christ chosen for an awesome purpose and no matter how long it takes God's purpose for your life will be manifested and it is for us to trust and believe that what God says he's going to do it's already done it's just a timing thing it's an earthly and a heavenly timing because everything happens in the heavenly first before it is manifested in the spiritual realm. 
So saints of God, my encouragement to you today is to just trust and believe in God. Jehovah God does not operate like man and that's what I love about him because if he, if he was like man, I could not stand here today. But because God looks at the heart and because God knows what's in you, none of us knows what's in each other. But God does. We can pretend in front of each other. But before God, we are open books. And because he knows what he puts in each and every one of us, that's why it's not what man says about you. Don't try to please man. Man can't do nothing for you. Don't try to get in good with man. Man is like us, dust and ashes. You need to get in good with God. You see? You need to be in alignment. You see, David knew well when David sinned against God. He said, I'd rather fall in the hands of Almighty God. Because you see, you do things to man, they will kill you. But God will extend his mercy and his grace. Oh, and then closing, I got to use this scripture. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things to whom be the glory forever and ever and ever. Yes. Saints of God, we are a peculiar people. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. The word of God says, eyes have not seen nor ears heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him that's what the word of God says and in Jeremiah 29 11 he said I know the thoughts that I have for you thoughts to prosper you that's the God that we serve so you have to believe in the God that you serve. The God who created you. Don't look at yourself through your eyes. Look at yourself through the eyes of God. To know that if he gave up everything, disrobed himself of all his glory and became nothing so that we can be everything, there is something special about us father god we give you praise oh god and we give you all the glory lord and we thank you god that you love us so much that you died for us oh god so that you could reconcile us back to you oh god we thank you for the inheritance the heritage that you have given to us oh god i know at times god we might not look and see ourselves my lord as how you see us, as how you fashion us, because of our circumstances, our situations, disappointments that we've had in our lives, it's, it's hard for us to see ourselves the way you have seen us. But God, we thank you that we can depend on you. Help us, Lord, to wait and to believe in you. Father God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Let your word go forth, oh God, without hindrance, oh God. Father God, let the hearts of your people be truly blessed. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen.